What is the opposite of monarchy? My answer, it's a constitutional monarchy. In a monarchy, the monarch is supreme over parliament. In a constitutional monarchy, the parliament is supreme over the monarch. Yet this role is vital to solving the most dangerous flaws of government. How successful is the constitutional monarchy form of government? The US News and World Report led a consortium to identify the 10 best countries in the world based on 76 attributes. They recently announced their findings. Of the 200 countries in the world, number one is Canada, number two, Japan. What is the common denominator of these successful countries? Seven of the top 10 countries are constitutional monarchies, and four have the same head of state, Queen Elizabeth. There are 35 constitutional monarchies. A dozen are mostly small islands with populations in the thousands. Seven are, in fact, partial monarchies. Of the 14 major countries that are pure constitutional monarchies, 50% are in the top 10 countries in the world. Of the 159 republics, only three, just over 1%, are in the top 10. The majority of republics are places that people are trying to leave. Today, there are millions of people living in republics that would move to a constitutional monarchy immediately, if they only could. Every day, thousands risk their lives. Many die trying to do so. Think of it. People who live in countries of warm sunshine, where everything grows in a perpetual summer, surrounded by family and friends, millions of people desperate to get to Canada? They are not coming here for the weather. They would rather live with a government that is not corrupt, not divisive, not tyrannical, with police you can trust, a rule of law where businesses can thrive and human rights are protected, good education, health, social services. The constitutional monarchy has solved some of the most deadly vulnerabilities of government. Ancient political philosophers identified two aspects of government, the efficient and the dignified. The efficient is the part that rules. The dignified is the part that reigns. The efficient is what you have to obey. The dignified is what you want to respect. The dignified represents history, tradition, values, wrapped in theater. The most dangerous government is the one that rules and also reigns. Not only does it demand your obedience, but also your loyalty. The most catastrophic failure of democracy came just after a country became a republic and got a leader who both ruled and reigned. Most of the people fleeing countries today come from republics where leaders rule and reign. In a republic, a ruler can use money or personal skills of manipulation to also reign. In a constitutional monarchy, it is impossible for a leader to both rule and reign. You can't buy your way in and you can't talk your way in. The only way to reign is to be born in. No matter how rich or manipulative, no Canadian can ever reign. Their ego, their capacity for power, will always be restrained. Canada will never be at risk from a leader who both rules and reigns. Humans have evolved with hereditary leadership, but there is a more compelling reason for this arrangement. A constitutional monarch is trained from birth to do what few political leaders could ever achieve the ability to shut up, the discipline to not talk about the politics of ruling. A constitutional monarch has to remain neutral. That's why they spend almost all of their time doing charity work 
or honoring outstanding citizens, respecting the leaders of treaty nations. But their most important role is this. If a leader ever tries to make a grab for total power to rule and to reign, it is the duty of that monarch to intervene and prevent it, to defend the constitutional liberties of we, the citizens. The constitutional monarchy has been likened to a fire extinguisher. It sits on the wall and most people don't notice it. But in a crisis, we are very happy it is there. One of the most successful republics is the United States of America, but it suffers from having a leader who both rules and reigns. The head of government is the head of state. That is a recipe for polarization and division. When the person who reigns is also a partisan leader, many people will be alienated from the dignified part of their government. Republics recognize this weakness and often try to remedy it by creating another office, usually an elected position. But nobody knows who they are. They don't have gravitas, the history, the loyalty, the pageantry and poetry to command respect. The constitutional monarchy solves serious structural problems of republics. For that reason, they are less polarized and score higher for quality of life and respect for human rights. So when people tell you Canada should throw out its winning formula to become more like the worst countries in the world, they better have a pretty good reason. Do you value living in a country that is less polarized, less corrupt, and more fair than 95% of the rest of the world? Have you come here from a place that is ruled by thugs, or ideologues, where the ones who rule also reign? Let us all be grateful for a monarch that has for 70 years graciously committed herself to the dignified part of our government. And thank God we live in a country over which she has reigned.